Welcome, and thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. My name is Doug Morton, and I'll be highlighting the various topics today. Through its following presentation, we will be focusing on some of the new features provided in the Advanced CO Power Pack 2023 release that may be of interest. With this in mind, let's take a look. The first item we will be looking at is a new tool which provides the ability to convert 2D CAD lines into advanced steel grid elements. It should be noted that these new grid tools work with and support advanced steel's new projected grid tool. All right, very quickly here, I'm going to come in, I'm going to create my grid lines using the new tool from the power pack, line to grid. So what I've done is I've laid out where I want my grid lines to go using lines. And I'm just going to use a line to grid tool. Now, this works with straight lines, not curved lines. So although I have a curved line here, I won't get a grid there. But all straight lines will be affected, such as the ones that are on the angle. And you'll see if I select this, and you can do them individually in each direction as you go if you want. I'm just going to window around the whole thing, select them all, right click. To find the length of the axes, I'll go by groups, I'll do the extremities. Uh, labeling direction, I'll go by groups, and then it asks me, do I want to determine the direction by line or by WCS? I'll say WCS. And you can see it's taken the lines that I've created, are placed, and created grid lines out of them. At this point, you can erase those original lines, yes or no, it's up to you. I'll just leave them there, that's fine. And do I want to create the model view? So we have in here Project Explorer, and you can create the model views from these grid lines that were generated. So I'm going to say yes. Okay. And how do I want to do it? I'll do all the grid lines instead of doing by grid line. I'll activate the camera for the model. So yes, the model views have been created, but I also want to turn the camera on for each one. And you can see when I'm done, it's created those model views. You can see they're listed here. It's turned the camera on and it's created my grid lines. I can then come in and very quickly just say on the Y direction, for example, you can see here if you need to, which one's which, just click the light bulb. That's the angular one, right? Group one. Then you have group two. If I click on that, you can see this one here is along the X. And then you have group three, etc., which is along the Y. And then you have your group four and five, which are the other angular ones. Okay. Now we're going to Come in here quickly. I'm just going to change the grid line naming because I don't want numbers in each direction. So I'll double click on the grid. And in here, I'll just click on automatic label and set it to capital letters. You can see everything has changed. So you still have access to all the same controls you normally would. And you can set those up. I'll turn it off if I want to rename it. I can then come to renaming and change the naming of those grid lines if I need to. For example, if I come down here, I have this angular one here. It goes from E3 to C4. So I'll just double click on that, bring it up. My single axes for grid line one, I'll change this to E3 to C4. So I have a different name. And you can see, you can call it whatever you want. In here, I have two different ones here, right? So maybe I want to have this as uh, A and B or something, or I can have uh, 1A, 1B, or what have you. Call it whatever name you want. Single axis, 1A. Oops. Got to change it, so that would, now it'll accept it. And this one here, I'll make this one single axis, 1B, just to have something different. Okay. Now, changing the names inside the dialog does not change the names over here, but you can always enable it to see which one it is if you want to. That's EC, uh, E3 to C4, and just simply right-click and rename it. And then you have uh, the naming over here, and you can see exactly which one it is if you want. Okay. So you have the ability to go in. You can just simply right-click and rename. You can also come into these model views right click, go to properties. And from the camera properties, which are enabled, you can see they're turned on. You can then come in and you can say, what, what is this going to be? Is it an anchor plan, an intersection node overview? You can set the type. 
include any uh, information that you want underneath the description. This will show up underneath the drawing when it's created. And you can override the default styles and scales if there's something that you need. So you still have access to everything that you had access to before. You can also come into here and select objects and create your views with just the objects that you've specified. Now with 2023 now, you can also use search queries to help you pick the objects that you're looking for. All right. So that gives you a, a quick overview of how you can add in these lines. And just to kind of give you an idea, when you're done, you can always have your building in there and create your drawings from those grid lines. I'll do one quickly. Output, drawing process, select the camera, and I don't have the camera selected, so I'll start with that. There we go. Select the camera, say OK. If I pick it, you can see everything set up. You're ready to go, and you get your grid lines in with your drawings, and you can have your cameras automatically created. And that is the new line to grid tool with the Power Pack 2023. Also, not before leaving, just to show you, this does take into account the new feature from. Uh, Autodesk, which has the grid projection, and you can use that along with these grid lines. With the multi-grid and level tool, you can easily create multiple grids, levels, and model views from within a macro dialog box. With the new power pack, we now also have access to a multi-grid level tool. Now, if you left click on that, you'll see that a dialog will appear, which allows you to define the grid lines that get placed in. In here, you can define what are the overall grid lengths. So for example, if I wanted to put 60 feet along the X, I need to come here and hit enter afterwards in order for the program to accept it and regenerate. You'll notice that it's placed the grid lines in and set them to 60 feet. I'll do the same for the Y. I'll type in the value 40 feet and hit the enter key that will regenerate the grid lines and they get created. You have at the bottom controls to determine how many grid lines you want in each direction. And you can set those up. It looks at the overall lengths and divides it evenly based on these values. For the grid lines in the X direction, we have the same tools that we normally have for our grid lines where you can place a balloon frame around the, the lettering or numbering. You can change from letters to numbers, define the starting position, put a label prefix or suffix. And you'll notice that it updates when you change. From here, you can come to the access spacing. We have tabs for both X and Y, and we can lock the grids here. So you can do a grid lock if you want for each of the grid lines. Um, you can come in, you can fix grid length. So this is fixed grid length is using the values from here. It will not change the overall dimensions, which means if we come to here and change, let's say this one to, I'll change it to 10 feet, right? When I hit enter, you'll notice that uh, it moves or shifts that line over and I end up with the next one actually having it five feet more. So it removed the five feet from this line and added it to the other one or basically shifted over grid line two when I did that. So from there, we still end up with the same amount of spacing, 60 feet, that hasn't changed. We can also choose to do adjustable grid length. So this way, if I come into here, for example, and let's say I change the value to 20 feet, I can then hit enter. And you'll notice that it's lengthened this area. And if I come back to the initial area, you'll notice that it's no longer 60 feet, it is now 65 feet. Right. So you have the option of constraining your grid lines within a certain area defined by the grid length here, or overriding that and saying adjustable grid length and just defining your grid length or grid spacing in here and having the overall dimensions updated based on your grid spacing. Uh, note that in here, if you need more grid lines, you need to come back to the access labels tab and you can add them there. 
At this point here, for example, we can come in and we can lock our grid lines if we want. That's up to us. We can also enable model views. You'll notice they turn on as we go, which allows us to visualize the 3D model within those areas, such as in this case here, we would see the elevation along those grid lines. And we can enable the camera for them. So if I come down here, you'll notice the camera is enabled. We can do the same thing along the Y axis. If you wanted to lock these, let's say these are in place and you don't want them to move, they're locked. You have your model view that can be created and you have a camera that can be enabled. Now, once you do that, you're going to notice over here on the side, it creates along the X and the Y, each of the grid lines uh, with the grid line naming there. So you have X, one, two, three, four, five, and then you have Y, A, B, C, D, E. So this gives you the access to uh, control your grid lines. You can then come in from there once you've got your grid line set up and the spacing done, and you can say, I want to create this at multiple levels. So I don't want to show it just on the ground. I want to create levels both above and below. Just say create levels. You can determine how many levels below or how many levels above. And you can see from the initial UCS point, it's gone up two levels and it's gone down two levels. If I remove this, let's say I get rid of the levels below, set that to zero. When I come here, I need to hit the enter key. It'll regenerate or refresh. And you can see now I have just the levels above. You can set what is the height for each. Again, you can enable model views for it and the camera. So that way you can get your plan view drawings generated. So if you needed uh, GA drawings for plan views, you can turn on the cameras and get that. And if you want to lock those levels, you can. You also can take advantage of the new uh, Autodesk uh, Advanced Steel 2023 projected grid. So you'll notice that I have grid lines at each level, but if I use projected grid, I'll have the grid lines only on the primary level, though the model view and camera will still be generated above. That is the multi-grid level tool with the Advanced Steel Power Pack 2023. Create multiple cameras in a series and at multiple locations from within one dialog. If you are accustomed to creating your cameras from the tool palette using the camera tools here, you may be interested in the tool that comes with the Power Pack. In here, we have now a camera creator. And if you left click on that, you'll receive a dialog which allows you to place in cameras very quickly. In here, you can see we have front, back, uh, plan view, current UCS, southwest, northwest, northeast, southeast, and you can decide which way you want your camera to face. Uh, it keeps track of your cameras by utilizing a counter. And under camera type, you have the different types that you can select right away to say this is going to be an intersection node or what have you. You can include a description, which is basically like the note field, and you can include the counter in that. If I want to put in here, for example, camera, and then I can use that code, counter. You can define the depth immediately. So if you want to say, my camera is going to be a certain depth, both the front and back, you can set it up to whatever you want, and you can define that fixed area around. So all of these options, which are typically available in the tool itself, is also continued to be available here. So let me just set the fixed. You can assign your drawing style and scale immediately, and you can decide whether that's going to be user style or a non-user style out of the box style, just by clicking that box. You have also down here, select objects for camera. So the tools that you would normally get to select the objects you want to include inside the camera is still available to you here. And then once you're done, you can come in and you can place that camera. So if I wanted to have a camera here, you'll notice that by doing that, based on the settings that I've created, I, I get my camera. Perhaps I want another one now from the front. I can switch to front and place that one. And I can continue to do that until I've received or created all the cameras that I am interested in. Once they're in place, I can simply say exit, and you'll see these cameras have been created. 
You'll notice if you go to any one of them, you have in here the description, it says camera one, camera two, so the counter is going to keep track of them. It's going to set them up and it'll utilize that incrementing number for the cameras that was used when they were placed into the model. The detail box can be overwritten. This is what was set up before. Your display type, and you have, again, access to select your different options within the model. So very quick and easy way now for you to go in, um, use these camera tools and place them in from a single dialog. You can place as many cameras as you want and in any direction that you like. If you are building a heavy steel joist with vertical bracing and want to connect it, there is now a new dedicated sandwich plate connection type for the I-beam shaped trusses. If you're looking to place some truss sandwich plates in here and you have a vertical member, then the next tool might be for you. Come to the power pack connection bolt. And if you open that up, come to the bracing section along the side, you'll see there's a new tool here called truss sandwich plates. In here, you can select that. Pick the objects as they're described at the bottom here. You can see it starts off by selecting cord. Then you need to pick your vertical beam. From here, you can pick your diagonals. If you have one, that's fine. You can see the second one is optional. Once that's in here, gives you an image here. It shows you an example of the different scenarios where this can be used. And note that these members need to be coming to a common point. If we go through this, and I'll just move it over so we can see it as we go. In here, we can come to the sandwich plates. And we're going to set this up so that we have some different projections from what's there, obviously. And we'll change this around a little bit. So I'll just put 18 inches. 18 inches. I'm going to set this one here to, let's say, 14 inches. And you can see it's pulling the plate in from each side. It's pulling it up. So in order to resize the plate, this is the way you would go. We'll handle the rest of that as we go along. So this gives us now the ability to come in and create different projections. The fourth one is from the top. So if you need to line it up with that other member along the top, the cord, you can come along here and you can set that as well. From here, we're going to come to the corner cuts and we're going to make some changes in here as well. So the bolt distance cut, we're going to set this up, let's say to three inches. You have options for corner cut vertical, corner cut diagonal, and corner cut uh, diagonal two. And you can set each one of these. So I'm just going to set this to four and the other one to four. Right. And that'll handle the corner cuts once we've got this set up to plate properly. Let's handle the bolts next. Now you have rectangular notches where you can come in, you can create your rectangular notch, and this is on along the cord if you need that. The bolts, we're going to move these around. So obviously you can see this is not coming in the way that we want at the moment. So we're going to change this up a little bit. The cutback is a little bit far away, nine inches. So what we're going to do is we're going to set this, at least in this scenario, we're going to set this to four. You notice that the bolts are pulled up that beam a little bit. Okay. We're also going to change the amount of bolts here. So I'm just going to put two for this. You can see now I've got that inside the plate. I will change the spacing in between. I don't know. Maybe I'll leave it like that. It fits. And the number of bolts, one. Now, that's fine. But what we need to do is we don't want one up the middle here. So we're going to switch to custom. And I'm going to change the across distance here to three and a half. So I'll put three and a half inches. And you'll see that it places those in and it's going across now. And that handles our first set of bolts along the vertical. On the diagonal, if I come into here, we'll do the same thing again. We'll switch it up a bit. Again, the cutback is a little too much for what we've got going on here. So we're going to change that around. You can see it's pulling that beam back, not quite as far now. Again, I'll change the amount of bolts. 
the interims okay. Again, we're going to need to set this up so that it's not going along the center. So I'm just going to come into here and again, three and a half. And you can see the distance in between is not three and a half. And you notice that when we pulled it back and set the amount of bolts that we're starting to get that cut come in as well. Bolts on the diagonal here. Again, the cutback is too far. Same, same scenario. We'll do that 10 inches. I'll set it to two bolts. We're going to come into here and we're going to change this to three and a half. All right. And already you can see that that is looking a lot better than it did when we first came in here. But we have the ability to go in and we can determine what the cutback is for the beam, the amount of bolts that we have going along, how far down the plate comes, how far across the plate comes, if we need to have a diagonal cut, what is the spacing of the bolts, and so on and so forth. And the last one here we have is for the cord. I'm just going to change the amount of bolts on here. We'll just put uh, four instead of six. And I'll come down again for the spacing custom. I want this separated, so I'll put custom and I'll put three and a half inches. And you can see we now have a plate similar to the other one, which allows us to bolt each of these members to that cord. It also gives us, if we look at the side, we have the option here to determine, you know, is this beam the right size? Does it fit in properly or not? And in scenarios where maybe the uh, the cord here in the middle, not the cord, the, uh, the diagonal and vertical members here in the middle are not, uh, you know, as wide as the other member, the plate coming down, we have shim plates. So if you need to create the shim plates in order to fill out that extra space to line things up, you can do it automatically, manually, or you can do custom and then you can set it the way that you want. Geometry vertically for the shim plates. Okay. Layout. And same thing you have for diagonal one and diagonal two layout. And okay. so you got vertical diagonals, each individually controlled. You can set the size of the plates, the holes, the thickness, and so on. Also in the new release, an updated graphical user interface arrangement for the new features and old has been put into place. This was done to make space for the new content that was added. When you look at it now, you'll notice that the additional shapes were combined into a single dropdown. The glass tools were placed together. There's a new grid and camera tools area added. And the structures vault was placed as a single button on the ribbon. Where the structures vault is concerned, a completely new palette has been created. When enabled, a palette will appear providing, in an easy to read fashion, the structures that have always been available. From here, you can still create and generate your own default structures that can be saved to the library. One of the enhancements added in the 2023 Power Pack release is the ability to control the stringer widths when the stringers are made with plates. Okay, we're going to start here by going to the power pack, stairs and railings vault. I'll open up the pallet, and we're going to place a one flight stair. I'll pick the bottom point, the top point, and put it in by center. With the staircase in, I'm just going to quickly turn on the landing at the top so we can see something going on up there as well. I'll put that as straight, keep it clean. Now, what they've added in here, uh, I'll do identical stringers. If you're building a staircase and you're doing the stringers using the plate profile, okay, when you come into this now, you'll see in the positioning tab, they've added to or developed this further. In the past, you could always do top depth, bottom depth, and that would control the width of the stringer. So you would have to set your top and the bottom. Now, if I look at this from the side, show you what I'm talking about. Okay. So here, joint properties. All right. So there's my stringer depth. 
Under positioning, you can see from the nosing, it's going up 13.6, and from the back edge of the stair, it's coming down 13.16 an inch. So if I were to put, uh, for example, here, zero for each, or you know, I'll just do the one, you can see that along the top of the stringer now, there is no offset. So it would be measuring from that point in the, the top, and I'll do the other one, and it'll be measuring from the back point here. And then you would need to measure each depth in order to determine the size of your stringer. Uh, with 2023 now, you have the option where you can switch from top and bottom, and you can come in, I'll just put this back to the way it was here, Control V, Control V, resetting the values. So we'll start with what they were. Um, you can come in here to top or bottom. And when you do that now, you also have control over the plate total width. Was not a, this was not an option that existed before. So now you can set your top to whatever you want. So if you wanted a nosing of, let's say, two inches off the nosing point of that stair, you can do that. And then you can set what is the total width of that plate stringer by coming down here and typing in the value you want to use. And you can see it's going to give you that 10-inch stringer now. Now, at the same time, they've also added in how this is relative to the landing. So again, you can see in here we have uh, relative to landing. What is that going to be? You have your top depth, bottom depth. Right now it comes up and it's completely flush with the landing. Let's say I wanted my two-inch nosing off the top of that. I could put that in. Um, but I have to determine, okay, there's my top, two inches up. And then what is, how far is it down from the landing? So what is the depth down? And then that will give me my width. If I just come in here now and say, I want the nosing from the top, or I want to set the value for the bottom, pick one or the other, you'll notice that I get that. And I can override the landing plate width now. Check that box. And what happens then is I can set the value for that stringer here. So if I wanted to come in, I wanted to place that in, you can see it's going to set or resize the depth of that accordingly. So these values now are completely controllable. You can set what is the height of your stringer and what is the height of the plate at the landing. Also, when building stairs using plate stringers, a completely new tab has been added that allows you to control the miter cut near the top. All right, so here we're gonna look at the staircase uh, made with uh, plates for stringers. And if I open it up again here, I'm just gonna advance joint properties. You're gonna see that under stringer, we have, it's made with plates, and I got both the same. They added a new tab here. This was not in the previous version or the previous release. So we have control now over the miter cut that goes between the stringer and the landing. And if you look at this now, this is all completely new. Um, you can say, I want a miter cut for, and you can say at the top. And if I disable it, this plate itself, you'll notice that it becomes a continuous. The stringer actually comes up and across one plate. There is no miter cut. It's just a continuous plate that comes up and across. So if you want your plate to just continue without having a miter cut, you can do that now. Or you can enable the miter cut. And then when you do that, you have control over, you know, if it's welded, what the weld size is here. So you have that weld that comes in. Is it a fillet weld, uh, full plug weld, partial weld? You have shop, site. How is that connected? Is it uh, two pieces or just one as far as the assembly is concerned? So you can control now that miter cut at the top. And if you have one going on at the bottom as well, you have the option down there to do the same thing. If you have more than one flight of stairs, which I only have the one, you can control each flight individually and you can set them for each flight differently. So that is the miter cut now for the power pack for Advanced Seal 2023.
Just a couple of other items to note, in addition to the general improvements which have been made, is that additional Stedman floor profiles and connections have been added, and new bolts based on ISO standards have been added and can be found within the Management Tools Bolt Editor. These bolt types include dome nuts, blind rivets, button head screws, countersunk screws, socket head cap screws, studding, and plain washers. This completes the What's New in the PowerPack 2023 presentation. Thank you for watching and have a great day.